you guys are in it for the right reasons and so i and, and i and i love i love working with you guys we appreciate that we love very you David. much yeah dude i'm gonna cry man yeah this is like <laughs> i'm actually Jay's gonna cry. garage we're here yeah. this like dude this free. is like wild oh. are you actually crying yeah oh yes. my god <laughs> Thank Dude, you. That's, oh, that's all, man. It's Thank first you. podcast. We got tears. Well, man. I mean, I mean, it's sincerely. I think maybe that's where the tears come from. You know, I'm telling the truth here. Yeah. So. So welcome back to another episode of In the Driver's Seat with ABS. We are on the West Coast. We are not on the East Coast. We are in probably one of the most famous garages in the world. Probably the famous, the most, most famous garage in the world. And I've been very excited about this episode as we've gone on our California trek. This is our last episode that we're filming of the week. And we are here with one of my heroes. The legendary. Yeah, really uh, I would say a big brother to me. Uh, we're here with uh, David Swift, and David Swift is the man. <laughs> David Swift is like the greatest guy I've ever met in my entire life. Um, back when we started our YouTube channel, and we can get into this a little bit more, David really took me under his wing and taught me everything that he could teach me in a way for me to understand at at a beginning level. and and has always been so kind and has always helped me and been super supportive of me and the team and you know i'm very happy to call david a good friend of mine david thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to to do this with us this is this is awesome thanks thank you for having me i feel very honored to uh join the roster of guests that you guys have had <laughs> and uh i am a fan of the show i have watched uh not all of your episodes but several and uh yeah thank you to my first podcast i don't think i've ever done this before so it's it's cool to do it with you guys and uh yeah i've been very excited about this as well so it's great it's great to have you david thank you for your time and i think it's very very safe to say that without both of you gentlemen if you're watching this on the youtube channel you wouldn't be without either of these two guys so it's uh without david i think it would have been you, you know, we talk about our equipment and the jokes that we had a new piece of equipment to every shoot, but we would have been on a very different trajectory without without you, David. So cool. We, we well, appreciate cool your to help. hear that. Thank yeah. you, guys. Yep. Thank you. It was sincerely, I appreciate you saying that. And for those who don't know who are tuning in, David, tell us a little bit about who you are and how important you are to, to Jay Leno's Garage and, and all of the endeavors that, that you guys have. Sure. So we, uh, I work for Jay. We do uh, Jay Leno's Garage. We had a CNBC show that we did for seven seasons that recently concluded. Uh, we still have a YouTube channel. So we post a new episode every Monday at 9 a.m. Every single week. That means there's 52 episodes a year. Some of our episodes are like 45 minutes long. It's something we've never stopped doing. We mm -hmm. are up every single week. We post an episode, which is something comes from Jay. He said, hey, you guys got to be regular as you guys are as well. And so we have been. And that's something that's a point of pride for me is that we have never missed an episode every single week uh, since 2006. We've been that's putting up insane. weekly episodes. So uh, very proud of that. And we're looking for a new home uh, on a broadcast network somewhere. So stay tuned for that. So that's what I do. I, I help Jay make his TV shows and I kind of just uh, wander around here and, you know, uh, whatever, cause trouble from now on. <laughs> right, the Zamboni around. It's, yeah. pretty, it's, it's a pretty easy place to get lost in a very good way. I mean, this is all of our first times here. Obviously, we've spent a lot of time with you on the East Coast, but this is this is wild this is wild and um you know we've all watched the videos we all have watched uh jay's show and your show and just seeing it in person is a dream come true it's really is it's like yeah it's like one of those moments that you you you, you can't even make it's up right it's a pinch me moment this yeah. will be a three-hour podcast because we won't <laughs> want to get up from these chairs but i i literally could not sleep at the fact last night that yeah. we would be here with david uh recording today 
And um, but you mentioned um, you've been doing this for 16, 17 years. To you, David, what kind of is the key to keeping that all in motion? Uh, good question. I don't know. Um, I, d well, I, uh, what's the key? Um, I think it starts just, I mean, you got to love cars. So Jade really loves cars. And, you know, what's neat about this collection uh. is there's like, <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of like different stuff here. I mean, there's yeah. kind of, you can't really pin down Jay's collection to like one theme. It's, right. it's right. a little bit of everything. So there's a little something for everybody here. So I think uh, having, you know, seen people come and go from the show, like, you know, people kind of get a niche that they're interested in. And, mm -hmm. and then, you know, it's great because we, we get the benefit, like you guys have met some of like, for lack of a better word, savants in the car industry, like mm -hmm. the people that know everything about a lot of different, or maybe just a very particular, you know, set. Um, so it's great to be able to like get th that exposure of so many, you know, such a wide range of knowledge. Yeah. yeah. Right. That's but, what keeps it going. I think there's always something cool, you know, to, to learn about. Yeah. And there's so many different corners of the automotive world and both, you know, us, the Audrain and y'all on your channel and what you all do here, try to, it seems like tie it all together and bring everybody together to a common ground. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That's yeah. what, yeah, we definitely try to do that. I, I know we spent a lot of time with you on the East Coast, and one of my favorite parts about having you come out to Newport is oftentimes your dad and your mom come down. Yep. Right. Yep. And right. your dad has, I love trucks, I love fire trucks, <laughs> and your dad has a very, he's a very important person in that industry in the the vintage fire trucks do you want to talk about that yeah, with jay yeah. a little bit sure so that's actually why i'm here in the first place is that m that's what my dad does for a living he restores antique fire engines um and J jay received uh, a fire engine from the city of burbank it was parked at the end of the runway here at burbank airport and after 9-11, you know, the regulations changed where you couldn't have something obstructing the sight lines on the field. So they had to get rid of this fire truck. They didn't know what to do with it. They gave it to Jay. Mm -hmm. So uh, Jay, you know, uh, was looking for maybe some help on this thing. It's like, I got this truck now, so what do I do with this? Calls my dad. And so we actually came out to visit my grandparents who lived close by. And we were here, it just, it was a Christmas, you know, family vacation. On Christmas Eve, uh, my dad looks at me and he says, uh, hey, uh, we, we gotta go get some stocking stuffers, right? Yeah, well, let's go get some stocking stuffers. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, okay, sure. So we get in the car, and this is like, oh, this is a long time ago, so it was like those old uh like external gps yeah he's like yeah. here plug this Tom address or whatever <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah yeah plug this address in and it's like two hours away <laughs> you know recalculating you know? and That's he's like walmart <laughs> <laughs> long drive for mini m&ms <laughs> yeah. so he's like i uh, will no we'll make better time than that it's a stupid thing you know and so we drive here and we just showed up and uh, I, I recommend not doing that, by the way. Please yeah. don't just show up here. Don't yeah. do that. Um, and and <laughs> so we like hung out with Jay <laughs> on Christmas Eve. <laughs> That's amazing. And then my mother's calling like, where are you guys? And we're like, yeah, oh, the, it's The line at this Walmart line. is insane. <laughs> so Jay actually, you know, Jay gets given a lot of things, right? Yeah. By various people, like shirts and hats and like, yeah. Bally Total Fitness uh, gym bag, yeah, right? We, yeah. <laughs> I saw some. Yeah, we we see it all the time in Newport. Like someone made him a model. Like yeah, a, a, his Ford yeah. GT. Yeah. So so yeah. So Jay's like, yeah, I got some stocking stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so like, we get all this stuff that's just so random, like little coffee mugs, keychains, <laughs> stupid. Like, hey, we, one my of the mother was so mad because i mean we get home at like eight o'clock at night it's christmas eve my grandparents are like waiting with the turkey at the table you know like we walk in, we walk in smelling like gasoline and everything else you know so that's uh that was the first time i ever met jay uh was on that trip at christmas eve so 
<laughs> that's I, a great story i feel like that that just like speaks volumes to to who he is like obviously he's a comedian he's hilarious but there are those moments when things will just happen with him and he will just make you laugh and it'll be the funniest situation and i think that we've all had experience of that whether it's been on camera off camera it's just like he's amazing being around him is amazing totally well and then the, the, the thing is you know everyone we spoke to this week um yeah ha- have all at one point or another met jay or talked to jay and they all say the same thing yeah he is the best guy and he is the car guy's car guy yeah and I, I, we can all agree that he's absolutely what you see is exactly what you get, and he's that incredible. Yeah, and just genuinely a very nice person. Yeah, I mean, he genuinely cares about people, and uh, you know, he's the kind of guy that will remember, like, oh, your grandma's sick. He'll ask yeah. about your grandma like two, three weeks away. He asked about Antonio's collarbone. Right. First yeah. thing he yeah. comes yeah. in, asks about the collarbone. Yeah. Very yeah. true. So he, he just, I think, genuinely cares about people's well-being. You know. So how long after that Christmas Eve escapade did you uh, end up? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So that was the year 2002. Yeah. And, um, and Antonio wasn't born yet. <laughs> I was born in 97, Sean. <laughs> Sean was already a father in 2002. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. You're 97, right? I was born in 97. Wow. Yeah. So, it was um, 95. 95. Yeah. So I was like 14 or 15 years old when the yeah. first time I came wow. here. And so there's like this picture of me standing next to Jay's jet bike. Like, yeah. whoa. You know, like just. <laughs> Jet power, you know. Yeah. Um, so then, uh, coincidentally, like you know, life goes on, and mm-hmm. um, I've always been into cameras. I would like saved up money, and I mean, to, bought my own camera, and just like I love this stuff. That's what I've always wanted to do. And coincidentally, it didn't like it just didn't work out this way. But like, I went to the same college that Jay went to, so. I went there because that's where you go to do film stuff. And and Jay went there. I don't know why Jay went there. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so they had this program where you study in L.A. for a, a semester. You get an internship and you take classes and, you know, do the L.A. thing. Well, coincidentally, like my grandparent, my grandfather died. And like I said, he they lived out here. So we came out for his funeral. Um, we were here. And I had been accepted into that program. And so we stopped in just to say hello to Jay. And I was like, hey, by the way, I'm going to be uh, going to school out here and getting an internship. And just on the spot, he was like, oh, I'll, I'll get you an internship. And I was like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Epic. like okay. unexpected yeah 100 like yeah. unexpected and i was like wow okay well great so took a red high uh, uh, sorry took a red eye home that night and i was uh like working in like a pizza joint at the time in boston just being like oh man yeah <laughs> like, like it's <laughs> epic so he calls me and he's like hey um you know we uh we're not doing internships right now so um, we'll just hire you as a production assistant. And I was like, <laughs> whoa, man. Okay, cool. You know, so, yeah. wow. But, like, that gig was, like, 50, sometimes, like, 60 hours a week. Yeah. And so, like, I had to hide the fact that I was working that much from my school. So I was, like, taking night classes and stuff and doing my homework at oh, night oh, wow. and then working full-time during the day. Yeah. Um, and so that's uh I, anyway that's the story that's that's why i'm sitting here it starts with the fire engine and then you know my grandpa dies i, I go to the same school as jay i've been accepted it, it, it just all this had to like happen you know just so um so i, I got very lucky actually in a lot of ways and like sure it's it, you know i've worked hard in, in various yeah. things but like you know in a lot of ways like a, a lot of like cosmic things had to just line up perfectly yeah but i think of course like that that that's a case but i think what's so impressive for me about you and from learning from you over the last couple of years is how much of a hard worker you are and you know i know you're very humble but you're extremely important and all of the the things that you've taught me have helped me inspire the boys behind the camera and and 
I think your leadership is incredible. How did you learn to to be such a good leader like you are? Well, guys, it starts at the top. So like, think about this: that like Jay, Jay took this risk on this kid that didn't know anything, right? Mm -hmm. uh, takes a risk, you know, and he's believed in me to a certain extent. I'm not a production assistant anymore. I do executive produce the show. It's because Jay has like brought me up along the way. So, I mean, that's what you do. I think Jay's done that for me. I try to do that for other people. I think, I think the, at least the, the scariest moment for me and maybe a scary moment for you is when we filmed our first season of Mansions and Motor Cars on the Audrain YouTube channel. And I didn't know anything about any of this stuff. And you had recommended what equipment we should buy. And you came uh, into Newport um, early the, the weekend before we first started shooting. And you helped me unpack all these boxes of all these cameras. And you're like trying to explain certain things to me. And I didn't know anything about anything. And you were like, oh, okay. So <laughs> you get a piece of paper out and you start explaining things to me. And then by, by the end of the week, I think it was fine. But I remember that that first day that we shot that first episode because we were all the, the well, camera you had, operators. Well, you had the two best camera well, operators. Well, if you didn't know anything, <laughs> <What did we? laughs> it was in the dark. But I remember, yeah, that was that first day at Marble House. Yeah. And there were a few shots we kept going over with. But through that week, you could see, you know, we started to understand things and, you know, improve and just, you know, what boxes to put where and what yeah. wires to put where. And it kind of has spiraled since. Yeah. By, by the way, a little bit of revisionist history <laughs> here. I recommended that they rent gear because I was <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't want to be the one putting in the little battery into the thingy under the camera that, you know what I mean? And there's like yeah. little clamps and things that you don't really think about it you know that, that, like, it takes a lot it home. takes a lot and this is brand new gear fresh out the box here you go and remember it wasn't those fancy tripods no, right there those, shitty ones. those still shit camera ones. <laughs> like swivel ball yeah. awful uh, and it barely held the camera remember those like pretty heavy cameras yeah, yeah. In the back of the suburban, forgot about like, that we're always, always yeah <sighs> yep Yep. Uh, and then, you know, you we're like putting batteries, they're like Amazon batteries into the microphone. You're like, hey, oh, you'd God. be very happy because <laughs> everything that we have now is all lithium batteries. Very nice. With your recommendation. Yes. So we're all. I'm a huge fan of the Energizer Ultimate Lithium Battery. Yeah. And then Ben Chester and I are bringing all the cars to the shoot. And then all of a sudden we're also filming the B-roll for the shoot. Yeah. I remember, be I remember being at Marble House and kind of like standing in the grass, like picking my nose. And it, it was like <laughs> Swift or someone like, hey, numb nuts, are you going to come over here? Like, stand by this camera and it's like oh boy i have no idea what i'm doing but things happen quickly they, right like yeah. that's the thing and it's yeah. like no, i had right. no idea you know. and you know but david was so you know he was such a good coach and he was able to explain things like we were literally five and yeah. you know now i feel like i'm getting set up like when are you guys gonna dump on me let's no, get going no right? no never no well, i could well, we could so you, uh, remember how a sunburn you got yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm probably red right now. Okay. I, I, I miss that a little. I will I will dump on you like a a teeny, Go teeny for bit. It. Let me have it. Is no one wears more sunscreen than you do. <laughs> well, after that, yeah. our, Jesus our camera gear for like the next probably six months, I would like find bits of sunscreen whether it's like on the swivel yeah. head on the tripod or like Swift on, the I, on the eyepiece and I'm like, "Oh, <laughs> Daddy Swift. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is true. But everything about those early days, man, we were we were just trying to figure it out and you know, I always say to Antonio or whenever, you know, we go to Pebble Beach and people say I see you on YouTube. It's like it's it's guys like Antonio and, and David. Literally you two guys who who put Are us on the map. Are people recognizing you, really? Oh my god, yeah. yeah. Oh, well, not yeah. us, but it's like, oh, uh, no. you know, we're from the Andrean. I see you, you know, your YouTube presence is great and well, That's great. It's it's a that's great awesome. thing, but you know, we started with I remember we had 200 subscribers. Now we're almost at 40,000 subscribers. 40,000 subscribers nice. from the same thing as you. Consistent, right. you know, hard work from Sam, Steve, Antonio. I mean, it's become a real system that we've got going on here. That's and a lot to be proud of, guys. Seriously. Yeah. It's like, this is cool. You get, get all this stuff going yeah. on. It's well, really good. We laid the foundation. I yeah. mean, that's what it comes down to. That's generous, but all right. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, enough talking about me. <laughs> <laughs> Back to the sunscreen. <laughs> but what, David, for I mean, it's been such a it's been such a grind. I mean, it's 16 years, and every week, in and out, you're managing people and equipment. And to you, what you know, um, 
kind of exemplifies hard work for you? Is it the, you know, behind the scenes research? Is it the hustle? Is it, what is it for you and your team? I actually, the, the behind the scenes research, I like actually probably the most. Yeah. Cause it's like you just reading about stuff and learning new things. It's really kind of the fun part about it. Mm-hmm. Um, th- what's hard. I don't know. Paperwork. There's mm-hmm. a lot of paperwork in this business, especially mm-hmm. like with what we're doing is cause I mean, we're driving cars on open streets with, yep. you know, you know, a list talent yeah. and Joe Biden and, or we're doing, yeah. s- oh my <laughs> God. like yeah. you, you pre- presidents. Yeah. yeah. Or we're doing like, you know, dangerous stunts. Uh, so some of this paperwork gets a little bit nutty. I'd say that's probably the worst, hardest part of it is trying to navigate that. And then yeah. sometimes it's just like, Oh, the, you know, the lawyers got to look at this and we're like waiting on set. Like, please let us work. You know, mm-hmm. That's the worst, but a necessary evil, right? Like, we've got to make, and everything is really buttoned up. Like, safety for us is number one because of all of those reasons I just mentioned. It's just like there's a lot riding on some of these shots. How have the last few months been for you and the team with all that attention? I mean, I remember I heard it through you know we were in virginia shooting and lee told us what happened yeah and the first clip i see was a few days later of you walking out of the hospital to a minivan it was on like tmz or something i mean there must have been so much attention and calls and what was that like yeah i i I like i uh yeah i don't know it was weird um i'm sure but um you know like jay's jay's a tough guy he's Mm -hmm. yeah you know and so he he was very much about like being like hey i'm okay Mm. and you know even when he was on the the burn floor he was walking around to all the different you know there's kids in there right kids that are burned yeah that's pretty tough yeah Yeah. and so he like he was just knocking on doors and like giving out hot wheels cars and like trying to just make people smile like hey i'm okay i'm cool you know so it was weird but like again it was it was like a relief that that jay was like okay and yeah and it was yeah. like okay you know he's got the best care okay cool you know mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so yeah it was something i'd rather not relive yeah i'm sure <laughs> i would hope not but it seemed like he did recover quickly and it yeah. was it was very thankful or a blessing that he was here in los angeles and the burn center seems to be yep, pretty close exactly and it got he got up quick it was incredible the outreach too i think it was everywhere yeah. and it wasn't just people, car guys people either. were reaching was, out to was, us yeah like, you know to you know check in on us because yeah. i know we, we've done work with them obviously and um yeah it was it was incredible to see you know everyone the outpouring of love he got didn't the didn't biden call him as well yep joe yeah. biden called him yeah it's yeah nice. it's i, I mean, mean that speaks volumes yeah yeah, yeah. Right? and he was overseas i can't remember where he was um yeah he was traveling overseas and made a point to call jay yeah it's so incredible. He, i mean jay's a humble guy right so he, jay was like i don't think anybody cares and it's like <laughs> no everyone nobody does. like yeah, yeah people does. really care about you yeah you know wow well i think what what it's funny about him and, and nice about him is he is he has this ability to to make you feel special i mean even when we're in, we're on set and there's a fan that that walks by the set and and you know they interrupt the set and for us it's like we're trying to get this take done or whatever but for him it's easier for him to just stop say hello to them take a picture be the good guy that he is and then continue on his way and i think that like that's so inspiring for so many people to, to pass that kindness on. Totally. Yeah. We've had a few moments of that where we're on set and someone trespasses onto a property and all of a sudden, like, you know, they're right behind the camera, like just waiting for, for a moment. It's <laughs> when he treats it very kindly where I might not be so patient myself, but uh, you know, I'm sure I mean, you get used he, to it. He's got the chance to like make somebody's day or a week or right. a month, you know, yep. and like he, and, and there's really nobody else that could be Jay other than Jay. He's like, yep. he is the man. And, uh, you know, he, lo- I think he genuinely loves it. Like he yeah, loves he to like yeah. be with fans and like, yeah. uh, you know, so yeah, and that's one of the crazy things we hear. I mean, he, he'll come to a couple of our cars and coffees, either one a year or whenever he's around. And, you know, the people who meet him say, oh, yeah, he gave me, you know, we chatted up about my challenger and he told me about, you know, the story he had. And it's like, it's the same thing we hear from almost everybody. Yep. And he's so down to earth. And that's really, that's the story of Jay. He connects with everybody he meets and, you know, it clearly resonates through the car world. When, 
Oh, sorry. Oh, 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 I don't know. Oh, 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 I'm just going to change the subject a little bit. <laughs> you are a car guy just as much as we are car guys. When did that really start for you? Were you a kid? Were you a teenager? What do you have a defining car story moment where you were like, oh, wow, yeah, like I love cars? Uh, well, I, because my dad, uh, you know, I've always been sort of around engines and things like that. And I'm leaving out the fact that my uncle works here. So oh, neat. <laughs> yeah, I didn't that's that. another like s- story here. Right? Yeah, yeah. Um, yes. Yeah, so my uncle George works here. And, that's amazing. Uh, um, so I don't know. It's in my blood, I guess. I, I'm not necessarily like mechanically minded like they are. I like try, you know, mm. I mean, my dad would like be like, you're going to change the oil. And like, you know, so like, I know how to, <laughs> you, you know, hold the flashlight and all that. How do I do that in film? <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and I certainly, again, I like don't claim to be like the most knowledgeable. I mean, like, because again, like there's people that walk in here that are like, whoa you know yeah um but yeah i'm a car guy i like cars what's the what's like an early car memory uh okay so we well uh, we had this little briggs and stratton like little fire engine so Mm -hmm. uh you know it's a little bell and a little siren and like you know you slam the thing into gear and (laughs) me and my brother would go and do parades and you know i'd drive it and that was a lot of fun we'd dress up like as little firefighters that's so cool should get you a picture do you still have those yeah that's awesome we still have that that's super cool it's weird to look at it now it's like sitting in a dusty corner (laughs) and so small and you're like man a lot of memories tied up in that and then I learned to like my dad uh, had like a little Honda Trail 50 that he oh, yeah. let me ride. Mm-hmm. Um, so just tooling around in the woods up in Maine in in on that. Um, yeah. And uh, so we, my family has this uh, 1927 American LaFrance. Mm-hmm. Nice. Um, T head engine, yeah. uh, four cylinder. Mm-hmm. Um, so I drove that to prom wow Whoa. cool it's all original paint so it's like it's not like a you know showroom quality but that's what's kind of cool about yeah. it what did your prom date think of it um well i remember <laughs> the cares? wind was a factor <laughs> the wind was a very big oh. factor with for her hair. Oh. her hair yeah and plus i mean again you know you know better but it's like we, you drive some of these things and you're gonna reek of gas yep. and exhaust <laughs> oh, afterwards yeah. so we like get to the prom it's an experience. reeking <laughs> you know but like hey compared to the kid with the stretch hummer like yeah. i made the best entrance That's i'd awesome say sure. you know that is yeah. so cool um so stuff like that i you know i um now i have a 2006 nc miata as my daily driver canyon carver it, sure <laughs> <laughs> it's fun i mean it's like the, the compulsion of every miata owner to say how fun the car is so i guess i'll be that the, guy the proof is in the pudding though i mean the miata is such a fun car to yeah. drive mm-hmm. yeah i grew up driving my my grandfather's 91 special edition with the plate miata he was the first person in rhode island to actually get a miata so that the miata runs deep through through my blood but you're also a two-wheeled man you love yes, motorcycles yes yes so uh my dad and i um he uh we built this uh bmw r80 slash 7 1978 cross-country trip right and we took a mm. cross-country trip from maine to to here uh in october and uh that was at to that point was one of the hardest things i had ever done Mm. we did it in eight days it's it's a there's no fairing on this bike there's no windshield (sighs) there's no (laughs) and it's a vintage bike you know so carburation uh you know points uh and you know at one point the the front brake was set a little too tight so that it was just like on a tiny bit Mm -hmm which was fine until like you've been on it for several hours and then you pull into the gas station and it just locks up like at low speed, you know, you finally slowed down and it just locked instantly. And I like tumble off and I didn't, I wasn't hurt. I like did a tumble and like ta-da at the end. (laughs) (laughs) So embarrassing in front of the entire uh, fill up station. But yeah, we we were able to, we drove through, uh, we rode through rain and like sleet and 
really cold temperatures we went through like tornadoes in texas <laughs> i swear i mean not through a tornado but they were yeah, right there in the area. the funny story about that so um so <laughs> we're staying we we got cut off due to the weather we could see it coming in and we we're like oh we better stop for the night and we're watching the weather forecast and like watching this just like giant cells coming across directly in between where we need to go and so like at five o'clock in the morning my dad wakes me up he's like we gotta go we gotta go right now there's a hole in the weather system we can make it i think we can punch through I'm like okay like, <laughs> i'm like delirious <laughs> yeah. and like so he's he's gone into a, the gas station and grabbed some items for us to eat as like this makeshift breakfast and like, okay and we were like next thing you know we're on the bike it's dumping it's he and he's in front of me on his motorcycle and i'm just watching his tail light that's like all i can see and oh it's the God. craziest lightning i've ever seen in my entire life where it just goes across the entire sky like the bolt just starts over here and <laughs> like the whole sky and can you do that lightning noise again <laughs> that sounded so cool on the headphones i'm sorry so so I'm literally just in survival mode watching his tail light. I'm a fairly new rider at this point. And all of a sudden I see just this flash of like metallic go under my front wheel. And we had those uh, little communicators, helmet yep. to helmet. And I'm like, dad, what the F was that? What did we just hit? Like, mm -hmm. and he's like, I don't know. What are you talking about? <laughs> I'm like, you didn't even see it. No. <laughs> I'm like, this is so stupid. We got to pull over. Like, I'm, I'm like freaking out. Yeah. I am freaking out. So we pull over. Me and my dad had some choice words that you just, you have to have like yeah. on a road trip, right? Yeah. Sometimes. Hole in the weather, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hadn't opened yet. <laughs> I was thinking like, because we, I had to get back to work. I had to go back yeah. to the Tonight Show. And we were like, it was a hiatus week. So I took that week to do this motorcycle trip, but I've got to be back at work on Monday morning. So we do, we had to break through that storm. So I, but I was thinking maybe we'd load the bikes into like a U-Haul for part of the way. And then I don't know. I don't know. But I was, so I realized what it was. My dad had bought a package of Fig Newtons as, <laughs> as our breakfast. Ultimate dad move. That he, had, <laughs> he had put on the back of the motorcycle. So he, that's why he didn't see it. Yeah, and yeah, I saw, you know how those bike. Fig Newtons, yep. it's like a foil oh, line. We have them. <laughs> we have them. Yep. Yeah, you guys are <laughs> We got them. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. So, I, uh, we, we made it the rest of the way. It was so weird. After those eight days, being in a car for the first time after that was like such a foreign experience. <laughs> Just the windshield. Like, I'm not yeah. getting blasted in the <laughs> face. And I'm warm and comfortable. It was I, so weird. I know exactly how you feel when I come back from a track day weekend or if, I, if I'm on the bike for like three days straight and I get back in a car and you, you know, at a track day you're doing like close to like 160, 170 miles an hour at some point. You get in a car and you just like, oh, 50 miles an hour. Yeah, it's like just on a smooth pace. It's, yeah. it's yeah. so smooth. It's like, oh, yeah. this is great. Totally. <laughs> so uh, that I still have that bike. I'll never sell that bike. That's like, you know, such a well, sentimental thing. And now you have a, a bit of a more com comfortable mode of transportation. I do. Yeah, so I have a, a 2016 BMW R1200 RS. And it's like the same thing. It's kind of like the spiritual successor yep. of, of my 78. So uh, it's a boxer, but now it's uh, it's not an airhead. It's uh, it's liquid cooled, um, and it's fun. Yeah, you should you should. Uh, I know, I know. I I wanna I wanna rip that up the uh, Angeles Crest Forest. <laughs> it's not the fastest bike, but it's fast enough, and it's also you can put saddlebags on it. So me and my buddy Danny, who's our audio guy on Jalen's Garage, will. He's got a, uh, a GS, so nice. we'll do trips and go up camping in Yosemite and stuff yeah. like that. And I cut that, you uh, off that, the last uh, time. You can go. <laughs> up, up, up. Oh, no, I was going to say, and now you, you're, you've, you've turned to air, right? Yeah. Yep. yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is like a really fun thing for me. I really genuinely love this. I went and got my uh, private pilot license. We had a gap in between 
um, filming uh, between seasons where you're waiting for the network to pick you up ad- again. And so I had some little bit of idle time and uh, it's something I've always wanted to do. And it, so I went through the process. I started uh, in September of 21 and I got it in April of 22. So coming up on just about a year of having my license. Uh, one of the hardest things I've ever done. And some people will be like, no, it's super easy. <laughs> Not yeah. for me. I, I really, it was really challenging. And like the knowledge, look, f- flying a plane's pretty easy. I think most people would agree. It's everything else, right? It's like the knowledge component and I mean, even, even the flying, like taking off and landing, landing especially, right? It's, it's, it's difficult to like pick up. I'd say it took 15 hours in the plane with an instructor to feel like, oh, okay, I finally, I'm starting to get like a handle on this. Mm -hmm. You know, you'll have like one or two good landings and then like you'll blow the next three, (laughs) man. So like I, you know, that's another thing about it is like it, it, it will humble you. It has to, it, Mm -hmm. you know, it, and part of the test I would, I would argue it forces you to be humble. Like you can't get an A plus on this test. Can't get a perfect hundred. Like the examiner wants to see like, how are you going to react when things don't go so well? Yeah. So if you're just acing the test, he's going to throw a curveball, something that you're not going to know. Yeah. And how are you going to deal? You know, and meanwhile, you got to like talk to air traffic control and fly the airplane and figure out where you are. And, yeah. you know, it's, it's the ultimate problem solving. That's what goes into getting like, that's what everyone, like you're saying is it's not what goes right. It's how you react when something goes wrong. Totally. Yeah. So, it, I mean, for gearheads, if you have the interest, I like, highly recommend that you go do this. It's, it totally goes hand in hand with being a car guy. It's like details and I mean, you know, it's a, it, the plane I fly, it's a Piper, uh, sorry, Piper Archer two, little four cylinder air cooled, very simple um, engine, but it, it, you know, yet it, you can fly in an airplane in this thing. So um, do it, like go do it, go do like a discovery flight. You don't have to commit to the whole thing. If you, if you like it, great. And if you don't bail, but like not in the air though. Yeah. No, <laughs> no. Grab a parachute. I yeah. haven't done that yet, but That's something to do. <laughs> But oh, by the way, did you see this? Never mind. Look at the YouTube guy. The YouTube guy. Yeah, he got it. Don't get do take, that. Did he get it taken away for? He his did. Yeah. yeah, he's in big Wait, trouble. What? what happened? So, uh, YouTube stunt. Would you call him a stunt man? If you like a skydiver, stunt man. Sure. So he essentially flew his plane. He had his pilot's license, and um, he said he had an emergency, and he was filming, and he bailed from his plane, and his plane crashed into a side of a mountain, essentially. But after the investigation it found that he intentionally crashed it right not cool so like as an example i would fly in that area when i was doing my training and there would be i would flew right through that area as a solo student so like one of the things you have to do is you, you have to demonstrate you can fly by yourself and you have to go a certain distance. Well, I was flying in that area. So can you imagine the fact somebody's just abandoned Bailed the plane? Perfectly good plane. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> so don't do that. Yeah. I mean, I think universally the community came forward. The flying community was like, this is really bad. Don't do this. Yeah. Even before the investigation. Cause there were like a few things that just smelled a little bit iffy about that. Yeah. So anyway, yeah. So, I, you know, I, I always think about motorcycles all the time and I feel like I have a, a sense of freedom. Is that sense of freedom when you fly a plane? Is it like riding a motorcycle or is it just more? Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing because all over this country you have airports and some of them are really kind of tiny, small airports. And there's just like a mom and pop cafe there. And there's like this before I, I wasn't aware of it before I started my training but it's like amazing the infrastructure that we have in this country and truth of the matter is that a lot of these little airports are under threat because it's like ah, oh, we don't like the noise or it's pollution and, you know and but it's infrastructure we've already put in that we've invested in and it's incredibly important people really should think about these airports like a main street in a town it's like there are jobs and you know people there Mm -hmm. Um, And it's like vitally important that we hold on to this because it's like, 
you know, the the temptation to just like throw up a, a giant high rise apartment building, you know, is real, and it's mm-hmm. it's real here in, in L.A. too. Um, so anyway, not to get on the soapbox. And along with cars and motorcycles and planes, you're also an outdoorsman, and you have a pretty cool camper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So during the pandemic, uh, my my wife and I, I think like everybody kind of looked at themselves like, you know, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? And so we were like, you know, let's let's rent. So we had rented one uh, in 2019 before the pandemic. Uh, and just it was my wife's idea. She was like, I'd really like to do this. And I was like, OK, you know, I want to go to Peru or something. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> she was like, no, I'd rather just stay close. Like long story short we lost a house in a fire and so during fire season here my wife doesn't really like to go Mm. too far away just in case we've got to like Mm -hmm. go back home and bail stuff out that's crazy um so that was the reason she was like let's just we'll rent the camper and and we'll go and we loved it pandemic hits and we bought one we rented out to pay for it right so and that's been working out pretty well so like really i'm not out of pocket all that much when it's not being rented we use it yeah and it's come in so handy uh we you know like when it's really hot here sometimes my wife and i'll be like let's just go spend a night at the beach and so it's like our little malibu beach house you know yeah, cool. on wheels um but yeah I, we've gone all over the lost coast of california all through like the sierra um i love that stuff i just uh you know a lot of the stuff is just f- kind of free yeah you you know for the most part you just show up and yeah the cool thing about the camper is like you can go off the beaten path and find places where there are no people and just that's your that's your campsite it's not your traditional camper though so it's kind of like uh like a sprinter van right yeah if okay so if you if you watch jay leno's garage we featured it uh in the show with alex honnold Mm -hmm. so alex honnold is Mm -hmm. is famous for living in his van at Yosemite and climbing big walls and stuff like that. So uh, Alex drove his van, Jay drove mine. So (laughs) that's the van. If you watch that episode, that's that's, awesome. Yeah. So traveling around, you know, California, being a New England guy, how have you, you know, over the last 20 years gotten acclimated with California? And for us, I think, especially Antonio and I, it's a bit of a culture shock with (laughs) with so much going on here. It's very different than, you know, small town New England. I think like, uh, like when I flew in here for the first time, it's, you're looking out the window and there's just these mountains where you're like, holy shit, there's nothing like that in Maine. We were, we were up in the canyons yesterday. Yeah. It was insane. It's really mind blowing. It's it's truly eye-opening i mean i was looking down a hill and it seemed like i said to sam i could take one step and be in the ocean three thousand miles down right yeah you go from beach to all of a sudden you're on the the top of the mountain it's crazy yeah yeah so that's how i it was just like i want to go there you know and you see these little dirt roads up and you're like how the heck do you get there so i honestly that's how i like acclimated was through the nature part of it. It was like, wow, this place isn't just a concrete jungle. There's actually like a lot of cool stuff to explore. Yeah. So I would also say that that doing that has come in so valuable for me, like with locations, shooting, Mm. like knowing where stuff is, Mm. is like, so a lot of these places I visited when I first moved here, we've shot at. So it's like, it pays to explore, I would say. Yeah you know so that's how i mean and then that's why our house burned down because i liked to be near that kind of stuff which is in the middle of nowhere where there's like a very great fire danger right right so if we were fine don't feel bad for me it like there's far more people that have it way worse but we didn't own the place we were renting it uh we did lose everything we owned wow but i had thankfully renters insurance get renters insurance if you rent get renters insurance um and that's actually i used that payout to buy my house so worked out it worked out so (laughs) that's what i mean don't feel bad we're you know yeah so before we we close out um we're closing out already man we're, we're, we're gonna return the gear. To. I know we gotta return the gear. We can stay another week. <laughs> do you do you have any any kind of behind the scenes funny stories that you could tell us about Jay? Oh, about Jay? 
or maybe you and Jay or a funny experience that I'd you I'd like had. to hear a funny story about Antonio. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I could tell a funny story about Swift. Yeah, we'll save it. <laughs> yeah. That's a dinner conversation. Yeah, behind the scenes. <laughs> um, we, well, I don't know if this is funny. I, we, we, uh, I got to think about this as I talk, but here's one. We were shooting with John Fogarty mm-hmm. and uh, Jay... Jay has like all of these clothes from like the 60s and the 70s like as he was coming up he saved all this stuff like he you know that green suit that he famously did his first appearance on the Carson show he has that somewhere it's uh, supposedly he's got like some Michael Jordan like first edition no Jordans way. yes we got I somewhere in here somewhere so in here he's got we'll he saves out. this stuff oh. so he uh, on that day he uh he like brought all of his 60s clothes we wanted him to dress up it's always funny when jay dresses up for some reason <laughs> uh and so he like gets all this stuff out and like of course you know he's, some of it he can't really fit into but it fits me so i'm like trying on these like this i think he would agree the stupidest jackets <laughs> like the frilliest like yeah like i don't know what it was it looked like I looked like the cowardly lion from the Wizard of Oz wearing <laughs> yeah. this thing. Uh, yeah, so just, I don't know, trying on Jay's weird clothes was kind of fun. Um, he was, he, I guess sometimes it's funny when he gets really mad at me. Like, he, he uh, we, we had him driving uh, Liberace's Golden Zimmer. It's in an, like, early episode of the show. And to us, it was great because we had him dressed up in the stupid suit that, you know... <laughs> And he hates the car. He hates those, like, neoclassical, you know, he really strongly yeah. dislikes those <laughs> cars. Uh, <laughs> so he's just mad. <laughs> mad about it. And, and, like, it's in the show. Like, some of the stuff where he's, like, talking to me, he's pissed. <laughs> but it's just in the show. <laughs> just what a, you know, POS that thing was. Uh, it's really cool, though. Uh, Galpinol Sports has it. It's this really cool piece, by the way. You should go look at it. It's like gold steering wheel uh, and the candelabras. Wow. It's a really a neat yeah, yeah, thing yeah, in its yeah. own right. I, I always think back to our, it was our first day oh, at Marble House. And, I, I know what you're going to say. And one, I'll, I'll leave his name out. One, one of our bosses is driving and all of a sudden he takes a left and Jay's in, I think it was the 1911 Fiat. And you, you hear, all of a sudden takes a left, no, you know, no turn signal. And you hear Jay over the radio all of a sudden. Well, you use your turn signal. I got no lights. I got no brakes. I'm going to crash. Oh, like, yeah, yeah, so and we're like, like frazzled. Like, okay, I, okay. You know? That's like a, a household thing for us now, though. We say that. I got like, no lights. I got no brakes. Once, once a week. Yeah. I mean, some of this stuff, like, they're just built in somebody's garage. And, like, some of these are, like, meant to be more art than mm-hmm. functional automobiles. Yeah, yeah. And so, like, uh, you'll sometimes hear me. I'll be like, there's one segment in particular where i'm in the show being like slow down please <laughs> and he's just like laughing it up like whatever <laughs> you know uh so that kind of stuff i don't know it's it's tough like you know we got uh jay and kevin harp kevin hart in a sherp you know what that is the oh yeah it's, it's one a of those russian like off-road thing yeah oh, okay. sherp atv look yeah. it up it's this crazy you know the tires float and all this so i mean it's incredibly capable we're at this movie ranch and jay's just going all over the place with it, right so so i've like lost control of the shoot now at this point i'm like hey maybe we'll go up this road and we'll circle back and, we'll, and now he's going up there and now he's down in the Come river on. he's just having fun yeah, yeah just going nuts and then this movie ranch it's a beautiful place love shooting there and the, you know <laughs> it's just it's just relating this to what we do it's like watching you control the set is an art of its own i mean yeah. we could talk about that yeah, for an no, hour it's but, the best. but it's a whole it's a whole thing so they've planted these beautiful trees along this creek bed you know <laughs> oh, no. like to beautify the area you know it's some movies and jay's just like coming out of the creek bed just like <laughs> and just plows over one of these trees 
<laughs> and like being the nature enthusiast that I am, I'm like, oh wait, okay, they just planted this. I gotta stop. <laughs> we gotta stop. So I like stop. I get out. I'm like, Jay, you can't run over trees, <laughs> please. I'm gonna go replant this. <laughs> yeah, you give me five minutes. And then like Kevin Hart's going nuts because he's like, never. He's, he, he doesn't know what's going. He's like, good, just gone through a river, and now it's like, the, and so we played it like you can't kill Kevin Hart, you know. And, God. Uh, so yeah, it's fun. We have fun. I mean, <laughs> it gets crazy, but it's it's fun. I know we got to wrap it up, and we're we're getting there. But um, you know, you mentioned Kevin Hart. What was really you know maybe a, a memory of you know one of the guests who came on? You know, something memorable you could share. I think like uh, one of my all time favorites was uh, Terry Crews because okay. yeah. he just brought. If you watch that episode, he he did you know what you call bumpers where it at the top and and at the tail of every segment he would do like a little intro and an outro yeah. and so we just wanted him to bring that like old spice intensity <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he did like 110 percent of the time just like like ripping it <laughs> like, and he was so cool after the fact he just was like hanging out and like i really got to spend like an hour with the guy just one-on-one -on -one talking to him and he's really talented he's like designs furniture and like oh, wow. is a really talented artist that's super uh, cool and really like an in-depth kind of deep personality yeah and then you get this like crazy <laughs> <laughs> you know uh that's probably not the best Terry Crews impression. You can, this guy does the impressions. Uh, he was really cool. Um, I mean, it's tough. We got so many cool experiences. The presidents, right? We had George Bush and Joe Biden. Uh, you know, we Martha Stewart invited us to her home in Maine that was owned by Edsel Ford. And and that was a great episode. Beautiful that was an amazing place. Episode. Yeah. So like, uh, who gets to do that? I'm like the luckiest guy in the world, mm -hmm. yeah. you know? I, so. I think that's how, how we feel. And and David, before we end today, we did bring you a couple gifts. Oh, gifts? Hold on, I gotta, I gotta get out from behind this contraption over here. Can I give you guys some compliments now? Is this the time to do it? If you, I if, think you're really good on camera. I'm not just saying that. Oh, I'm blushing. I think you're really good. I appreciate good. that, David. I was watching the hey, stuff he that he finally you're... knows what he's doing. Yeah. Oh, my God. We'd be on the set early on, and David would come over and whisper in my ear. We can bleep this out, but he'd say, hey, Chester. Like, yeah, David? Do you know what the f*** you're doing? <laughs> and it, it would the scare best. the out of me for the first couple weeks, but that's how, you know, like, he grows look, a bond. It, we've all had that boss, right, where they, like, it, they sit over your shoulder <laughs> and it's the worst they're watching every move and you're like ah, you get like self-conscious so i just thought in that moment <laughs> what's the worst thing? i will never forget those moments with david it was just <laughs> cool that he was took a good advantage of it yeah. but i was watching you do your your reads at the peterson in front of the m1 and i just really had this moment of like man you nailed it and it was totally off the cuff well I, that was the thing and i i said to steve after i said that went so bad because I was mumbling no. through a word or something. No, I, I was literally like, watched it. I was like, this is good. I've I've always been amazed at, at Ben's ability to um, explain things in a way that if you're not necessarily a, a car person, he brings it down to a level for you to understand and then provides you with all of the details that make you want to learn more. Totally. And I've yep. seen him do it a lot in the museum with docents and guests over the years, and he does a really good job at, at, at explaining things. Sean, I'd say uh -oh. I relate most to you in the... Because, yeah. I don't know, maybe just because we're dads or whatever. Yeah, we're dads. And it's like I, I relate to what the things that you say in these episodes, I'd say the most. Yeah. I, and then as far as you, Antonio, I, you know, you're okay. He's, <laughs> he's, he's got nothing going for him except that wave on his head. <laughs> I mean, look, uh, Antonio, you guys said it earlier. It's like we were in the trenches together. Yeah. So, like, oh, I feel a kinship, in the mud. a very deep kinship with yeah, you and yeah. uh dude you have grown tremendously i think it's really cool to see what you guys have put together i think a lot of this you you know you can take some credit for thank and, you and uh thank you yeah man so we would not be here without him 
Thank uh, you. For we would sure. not be here doing this. And like him. the other thing is, I just say this about all three of you is like the attitude has always been excellent. It's always been like really fun. Every time I do get to come to Rhode Island, I really look forward to it because it's Good. like I know I'm going to be with you guys, and it's like it's just fun. And yeah. I, you're you're in it for all the right reasons, and and so and I've worked with people that are not right, and I'm not afraid to say it. Like you guys are in it for the right reasons, and so I, and, and I and I love I love working with you guys. We appreciate that. We love very you, David. Much. Yeah. Dude, I'm gonna cry, man. Yeah, this is like <laughs> I'm actually Jay's gonna cry. garage. We're here. Yeah. This like, dude, oh, this free. is like wild. Oh. Are you actually crying? Yeah. Oh yes. my god. <laughs> Thank dude, you. That's, no. that's all, man. Thank it's first you. podcast. Oh. We got tears. Well, man. I mean, I mean, it's sincerely. I think maybe that's where the tears come from. You know, I'm telling the truth here. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, we uh, we got you a hat. <laughs> all right. We've got a couple of those. <laughs> I got some uh, drain swag for <laughs> sure. Thank you. All and, right. Uh, we. We know you're a pilot now, so we got you this uh, pilot log with this very special uh, David Daddy Swift. <laughs> it's so like being a pilot, it's like being a vegan. Like, you, how do you know somebody's a vegan? You, you know, just uh, wait five minutes. You see the this? Pilot. It literally says oh, David wow. Daddy Swift. <laughs> oh, yeah. dude, see? this is nice. Yeah. Look at that leather bound uh, log book. Yeah, I'm a pilot. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen my log book? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> look at that all right well thank you guys that's that's awesome this has been so fun just yeah, to see you again on. and do all this oh get oh, it on yeah. look at oh that. it's like we're on okay. set again yeah. okay we gotta get your it sunscreen now. Yeah, yeah. we gotta get your sunscreen, sunscreen on it i don't know these skylights it's a little too much <laughs> i think i have pictures of you sunburn on my phone we gotta add yeah <laughs> oh man well david Thank you so much for taking the time yeah. out of your day. And I'm honored, guys. Thank you. You get like you have good, good star-studded uh, pot. You got like Rod Emery and Magnus and uh, I don't know Bruce Meyer and Ruffy. Yeah, you know, yeah J- Jay Ward yeah. on. It's like it's cool. Wow, yeah. very cool. Yeah, it's a pleasure to have you, sir. This right. has been and super thank fun. Thank you to, to Jay as well. Yes, for, Jay. Thank you for the too. yes yeah. for the hospitality. Hospitality and and I mean this is such an incredible space that that we're in but uh david thank you and if you like content like this remember to like subscribe comment share and we'll check ah, i don't want to leave well we won't check yet <laughs> we'll catch you in the next one thank you for watching nice and this is where we make the banter and we yeah. say f- you. gesture I like this i hate everyone i hate as, the, you, as they you fade out i right? gesture cry. yeah Ugh.